Welcome to Choir Success, helping your choir survive and thrive in the 21st century. My next guest is Michelle Harawinen, who is a professional grant writer and who has raised literally millions of dollars for choirs and choruses. And if you enjoy this content, please remember to like the video to bless the YouTube algorithm. And also, we do one video every week. If you want to be notified, then subscribe and click on the bell icon. <laughs> Michelle, welcome and thank you for being here. Nice to be here. So, uh, first of all, uh, how and why did you get into grant writing and supporting choirs and choruses? Sure. Uh, well, I started out as a just a general arts administrator more than 10 years ago. Uh, and I did a whole variety of different things, you know, marketing, production, fundraising, including grant writing, okay. uh, general management. Well, let, let's take a step back then. How did, how did you get into all that? <laughs> how did I get into that? Yeah. Well, um, I guess it was, it's all about who you know, right? I, mm, I did a mm -hmm. music degree at UBC. Okay. Um, and one of my first real jobs was with Phoenix Chamber Choir. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Where a group I, that I know well. You know very well. You sing with them. Um, and I think you're on the board now. I am on the board. Right. Um, so at the time it was Graham Longauger conducting and mm -hmm. I had sung with him at the university and they were looking for a choir manager. And I was, I was young, uh, 22, 23 fresh out of university and it was a great opportunity for me to get into arts administration. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, that so then from there, you know, it just progressed like I continued to do management for a variety of different choirs. But then the grant writing thing and the fundraising stuff just kind of popped up more and more as like something that I'm good at. And now mm -hmm. now here I am. <laughs> well, certainly something for which there's a great need as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, what, what's it like to, uh, to spend your time uh, supporting choirs in this way? How does it work? Like you, they come to you, how do they find you? What do you then do at a high level? Sure. Well, most of the time I'm employed by the choir or arts organization, but I've also done some consulting work as well, where it's so far it's been word of mouth. Um, but in the organization that I work for, uh, you know, you're at your desk a lot, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> writing, researching. Um, I find, you know, you're using your creative brain, your analytical brain a lot. So if you're sitting too long, it's important to like get up and move around. Right. Well, like, like a lot of desk type jobs, right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. But this is, you know, I think slightly more creative you know you need you need writers brains so right of course yeah because it is a creative process isn't it connecting the dots between a particular group and the requirements of somebody who uh, is granting money for whatever reason yeah uh, it's creative and it's also strategic too I think a lot of grant writing is is about your strategy and all the preparation work that's done beforehand in leading up to the writing process it's mm -hmm. There's a whole sort of cycle to it, I would say. Yeah, well, I definitely want to drill down on the, the strategy part, but let's, let's keep it simple for me for the time being. I actually know almost nothing about this topic. Okay. And so I'd love to hear just at a high level, um, what are the different kinds of funding and grants that a nonprofit can go for? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I'll speak specifically to what I know best here in Canada. Here in sure. Vancouver. Because it's different in, in the States or in Europe or... That's right. Yeah, okay. Um, here in Canada, we are super lucky to have um, lots of government support for the arts. Mm -hmm. And I hope it stays that way. <laughs> um, so there's sort of maybe four different tiers. In, in government, there's, you know, the federal level, which for most people is Canada Council for the Arts. Canada Council, right. And there's different national arts councils in other countries as well. Mm -hmm. um, they're probably pretty similar uh, with probably some differences. And then there's usually a provincial arts council. So for us, it's the BC Arts Council. There's also um, a gaming fund, which also exists in many different provinces and probably in other countries too where it's like a lottery uh you know the lottery companies have a f set of funds designated to give back to the community so then nonprofits can apply to the lottery right which, which is kind of like why the province does gaming right or that's right it's yeah. gaming it's the gaming grant. and even the casinos don't aren't they also part of it like, i believe they are yeah. they part of their funds their profits go into this fund that right. is then 
goes back to the community. I don't think a lot of people know that. No, because <laughs> it's kind of odd, right? It's it's a funny way of looking at money, right? That gambling can be good, right? Yeah, in a way. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think in Vegas it probably goes to to choirs or or whatever, but uh, but at least here, yeah, I, I actually know that because for for many years I know that the chorus that I sang with as a younger person. Uh, applied for those gaming grants and kind of depended on them. That's right. You know, yes. For operational uh, needs. Yeah, it's a fine line between being, you know, too dependent and properly dependent on on your yeah, operational yeah, yeah. funding. <laughs> well, this is this is also probably a major concern for lots of people because it's not because you might get it, you might not. That's right. Right. You and never so, know. I know that during this was before I was doing the work, but like in the 2008 financial crisis, mm -hmm. there was no gaming grants. So uh -huh. okay. I believe very few, if any, uh, nonprofits got their gaming grant that Did year. Did people stop gambling that year? <laughs> or, no. I'm not sure, you know, all the, the details about that, but you know, it's possible not to get funding, right? Yeah. Um, so you should always be on your toes, I think. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's go back to that. There's there's federal, like Canada Council grants. There's then some provincial level grants. Yeah. Uh, uh, what else have so we got? Then there's usually municipal grants. So we have you know a very well funded um, cultural services department with the city of Vancouver here. Okay. Mm -hmm. But most other cities also have like a cultural services department that then would offer some kind of community grant program. Um, so they're another good, very good source of funding for both operating and project grants. You, usually I divide grants by those two categories. There's operating funding and project-based funding. I mean, I'm definitely going to need an explanation yeah. of what those <laughs> I'll two go, things I'll mean. go into that. <laughs> and then just what was the last one? Sometimes there's regional grants. So, you know, we have Metro Vancouver. So that's ah, all the surrounding cities. Different from the city, but like yeah. the GVRD. That's right. Okay. They also can offer, you know, in our case, they do offer cultural grants. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that it probably exists elsewhere as well. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So those are like, those are just government funding though. Then, you know, on a whole other topic are like foundations, uh, right. which require applications too. Th that's sort of a separate beast from from government funding. There's similarities for sure in terms mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. creating a compelling argument to, to get a grant. Right. Um, but those are those are sort of separate. <laughs> right. So government, we have foundations. Obviously, there's now individuals, I suppose. And individuals, again, like a whole other ball game with individuals. Yeah. But I would say the theme between all three of them is relationships. Ah, okay. It's super key. Even, even the government funders, like people sometimes I think think, oh, you know, I just get a grant from the government and, you know, spend it and... The faceless government. Yeah, the yeah. faceless government. But there there are real people working in those jobs. But in fact, yes, in there those are jobs. actual human beings. I mean, do they, do they know you by name at this point? Some of them do. Some of them do? Yeah. yeah. So it is important to have those relationships with, you know, usually they call them a program officer okay, uh, yeah. with a government agency. Um, so, yeah. And their job is to give out the money. That's right. right. I mean, it's sometimes not their responsibility to give the money to you directly, but they're mm -hmm. sort of your liaison in go-between person. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I see. Right? There's okay. usually like a jury made up, often made up of community members who are sort of peer reviewing these applications, and mm -hmm. they're the ones who really decide. But the program officers also have, you know, have their hand in, in what's going on too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's so having important. a good relationship with a person like that would be a, a helpful thing. Super helpful. Yeah. They're the ones who give you feedback, you know, when you... Oh, sure. When you mm -hmm. get a grant or when you don't get a grant. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, you can talk to them and be like, hey, so I'm surprised, you know, we didn't get this funding. Can you share mm -hmm. a little bit? You know, why... Why, why were we turned down? And right. that, that can be the most helpful piece of information you can get. I suppose so. And then over the years, you'd, you'd pick up, uh, you'd wind up knowing a lot more about what will work and what won't work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I see it. It's all a process, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was thinking it's, it's a lot like practicing your music, right? Yes, like yeah. you get better at it the more you do it. Mm -hmm. um, and more well-connected. 
Yeah. All of, all of that. Exactly. So now, uh, one thing that's always confused me a little bit, and I would love to hear you talk about the, the, the sort of details of it, is the project, like you said, project grant versus operating grant. Yes. I mean, I can imagine that the project one has a beginning and an end or something, but I, that's about where my guesses end. Yeah, that's can you, good. like, flesh that out sure. for me? Yeah, well, operating grants are like the creme de la creme, right? If you get an operating grant, you're kind of in the system, more or less. You can lose your operating funding, but, mm -hmm. you know, operating funding sort of provides general support for, let's say, your whole choir season. Okay. If you're an mm -hmm. established group, you've got a good track record, um, you can try to get yourself into operating grants. Now, it's difficult if you're first time trying to get an operating grant because there's okay. all these mm -hmm. other established groups you know let's say a group has existed for 60 years they've been getting operating grants for decades right um mm -hmm. but that gives them a lot of stability in being able to run a program every year without you know worrying where the money comes from so an operating grant would be great in terms of predictably having the money that you need exactly yeah, of course yeah so who can get those is it i mean uh, the vancouver chamber choir only or is it <laughs> no you know <laughs> not just them okay not just them <laughs> uh there's a lot of groups in vancouver who do receive operating funding so yeah if you're running a regular season you've got regular staff you've got regular artists that you hire you've shown a good track record in the community that you bring quality events mm -hmm. you know to the public um that's that's a good moment to be applying for operating funding. Okay, it makes me wonder if if a lot of groups who um, might not have ever had operating funding would would qualify, right? It it is a little bit tricky and delicate. Like a lot of these groups I call have been grandfathered in. Yeah. Okay. So they've existed for so long, and they got operating grants at a time when it was easy to get your foot in the door for those things. Oh, I see. Okay. And the grant world is changing a lot. Is especially since COVID, but it is typically difficult for a new group to get operating funding. Okay. You have to really prove yourself. Um, but again, it's changing. I, I What I do see from grant funders is them wanting to give more funding to newer groups. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. And getting away from, you know, they'll continue to fund the established groups. Um, but you know, they'll they'll use money from elsewhere to try to give money to new people so that it is equitable and fair to give these mm -hmm, new groups mm -hmm. a chance. So I suspect we'll see more of that down the road. I, I hope so. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that will create, you know, a more fair opportunity for, for these new groups. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So and then on the, on the other side, what is a project grant? And a project grant. These are great for groups that don't have operating funding. Um, typically with project grants, it is for, you know, a one-time project. So mm -hmm. something that has a beginning and an end, um, you know, it has to be very well defined. Um, and you, for a lot of these agencies, you don't have to have an operating grant to get a project grant. Or sometimes the opposite can be true. If you're getting operating funding, sometimes you can't apply for a project grant. Again, to make it more fair okay, for these right. groups that don't have operating funding. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes they can be, um, you know, for one single production, if it's like a really special thing, like bringing in guest artists from around the world and, you know, it's, it's a huge production, it's gonna cost a lot of money. Those kinds of things would typically qualify for a project grant. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so what, yeah. what is the, so the people who provide the money, what are they, what are they trying to accomplish by providing uh, a project grant to, to bring in? I know that uh, a group that I was involved with uh, wanted to bring in Voches 8 from, right. from England. Yes. From the UK, I guess. Yes, yes. Um, so w why would the Canadian governmental organizations want to provide groups with a grant to do that? Right. This is a good question. I don't know if you know the answer, but I, <laughs> well, I'd love to hear your thoughts yeah. anyway. Yeah. Uh, I know that there are some grants out there to bring touring, foreign touring artists into the country. Mm -hmm. So perhaps it was that program that you applied for. Um, the Canadian government wants to encourage, you know, foreign talent to come to the country to, mm -hmm. to share it with Canadians, right? So. That's one incentive they have. Okay. And now we're kind of getting into like bigger policy 
yeah. related topics. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's probably well beyond the scope of our <laughs> yeah, of our chat today. Yes, yeah, so it, it, I know that you know the federal government has an interesting relationship with the Canada Council for the Arts. It's supposed the Canada Council is supposed to be like an independent. It is an independent body from the federal government, which you know always changes. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of crossover there too. So sometimes which government is elected does inform, you know, the the guidelines of the yeah, Canada of Council too. So it's interesting that way. But typically the arts bodies, you know, they want to bring foreign artists in. They want to support. Um, experimental um, artistic projects that maybe are risky financially, but that oh, have yeah. good artistic merit. Artistic, uh, merit. Yeah. <laughs> artistic merit. That's a very common word in, a, in your grant writing. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to quickly ask the audience a question here, which is, uh, have, has your choir or chorus ever received an operating or a project grant? Just write yes or no along with your group name in the comments. So let's dive in a little bit to, you said something about strategy, which mm -hmm. is that there's kind of a way to set yourself up to be more likely to get this kind of funding. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about that. What if, imagine I'm running a, a, a community choir or something and, sure. and I want to get some money. How do I make myself look more attractive? Yeah, sometimes I would say that I spend more time thinking and planning the grant than writing it. Okay. Um, so when I say that, you know, doing your research about all the available grants that are out there, you know, you can do a Google search, lots comes up. There mm -hmm. are fancy programs you can pay for that are like grant databases okay. where you mm -hmm. can put a search in and it'll show you which grants you're eligible for. Those are very useful, but they are expensive too. Like what would they cost? Oh, hmm. like I mean, some of them cost like 1200 bucks a year. Okay. It's like a monthly subscription. Yeah. Grant Connect and Grant Station, I think, are two of them here. I see. Mm -hmm. um, they're costly. I think one's available at the library for free, though. Actually, yes. Oh. Yeah. If you go to the Vancouver Public Library here, you can actually access that database okay. for free. So there may be other libraries where you can, they have the subscription, and you can go to your public library and use right, one of these right. systems. They are very useful. If you if you don't have any sort of idea what's out there, that's a great place to start. Yeah, this is a very good tip. But then carefully reading, like it takes lots of time. You need the time to read through what their programs are that are offered. And I often like, I read the guidelines multiple times before I'm really sure that this is going to be the right mm -hmm. grant because you don't want to waste your time right. and you don't want to waste the grant funder's time if right. you rush an application and just put it in and maybe you've completely misread a question. Right, right. Deadly. Yeah, Deadly, really right? like you're wasting my time. <laughs> yeah. Try again later. Yeah, exactly. So just that prep work ahead of time is really important. And mm -hmm. then, of course, if you can, at that point, if you say this application looks so perfect for what I want to do, um, then try to talk to somebody. Right. Uh, like who's call on them the up. other side. Yeah. Call them up, email them. Mm -hmm. Visit them in person if you can. What whatever mm -hmm. you can do to create that connection. Yes, right. Um, and just at, just sometimes you can just tell them about your project ahead of time. Just be like, "This is my project. We really want to put on this show or do this thing. What What do you think?" And sometimes they'll say, "Wow, that sounds amazing! Like I'd love to see an application." Sometimes they'd say, oh, yeah, "Maybe yeah. not right now." Not right now. Okay. <laughs> So let me ask you this, um, if for every grant that you successfully capture for some group, how many of those conversations do you think you have to have? Conversations? Well, with people, with, with potential funders. Right. You know, if there's a chance that now's not the right time or, or whatever. So, oh. you know, so you're going after 10 different grants. Right. You must have a whole bunch of conversations with all of them. Yes, yes. How many would be successful? Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. It really depends on your project. I I'd suppose say. so. And 10 would be a lot. It, um, I think, again, like trying to do your research ahead of time to just narrow it down to a smaller list that right. seems the most manageable mm -hmm. is good. Other, for me, I find then it, it's too overwhelming, right? If you've got too many balls in the air, you can't catch them kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I'd say just start small. Start okay. with a small pool. And if, if, if things aren't working out, then you know, move on to the next mm -hmm. set of grants that maybe look right 
So if you've, um, if you've gone through the first couple of steps and you've figured out what exists and you've kind of narrowed it down to a few, uh-huh. uh, what, what strategy remains, right? How do you, how do you then, what do you do now? Uh-huh. Right? Now I would tackle the questions <laughs> in more, like actually start writing them out, you know, okay, okay. like you've probably by this point thought about them, you know, you're out, you're walking or you're doing whatever and you're kind of mulling all these things in the back of your mind, they're percolating mm-hmm. and now, you know, here you are in front of your desk, you can probably start, you know, writing out your answers. Mm-hmm. Um, the other crucial thing is proofreading, you know, I would never submit a grant without somebody else looking at it. Oh, I know. You get very close to the chalkboard, right? And you don't see your own little mistakes. Exactly. I find this too with whatever I'm writing. Yeah. You know. Uh, and then what uh, what does a great application look like? Again, I guess it's going to be down to the specific one and reading mm-hmm. the questions and all that. But if you could make some generalities uh, about it, what uh, what do you think is a high quality grant application? What does it mm-hmm. look like? Well, the writing is super important. Like you want to be clear and concise as possible. Um, Sometimes, you know, people have written way too much about something, right? Sure, because put yourself in the shoes of the people at the other end and, you know, they have to figure out whether they're interested or not, but they don't want to read a whole book. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes really short and sweet is the best. Sometimes. Mm. Um, and most applications these days have word counts, so you are confined to ah. you know 250 words a question, and it's actually really helpful. It's it helps you know people on both sides of of the application to just yeah they want to see it short and concise, no grammar mistakes, you know the basic stuff. But it, it can go a long way if if you put in a sloppy application, even though the project's great. Yeah, you know they might wonder like. Are they sloppy in other areas? You know, so right, right. It's like like looking at resumes, right? You know, exactly. and like, oh, this is misspelled an easy word at the beginning, and like, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> and is it like that too? I mean, the, the many many times that I've been looking through piles of resumes, uh, I'm kind of looking for any reason to d- discard something to just narrow it down. That's right. Right. Imagine the grant evaluators are in a similar position. Very much so. Yeah. Like they might get dozens or hundreds of applications and they got to go through them quickly. Yeah. So I don't like this paper color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got pictures everywhere. Yeah, no, forget it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. So so let's do this. Um, if, uh, if I was a person who wanted to get into doing this or even if I had, I'm working with a group and I'm like, they've told me, okay, please Go get us some grants. Yeah, and then I know you do this for a living, and you're really good at it. And so uh, I, we, we have coffee, and I say, please help me. What are your top tips for making sure that I don't make a fool of myself and that I actually make this work? Yeah, you know, what would you tell me? Yeah. Um, well, I've said it before. Do your research. Mm-hmm. Come in ahead of time with some knowledge about what what you're aiming for. You know, don't don't just be like help. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, you can ask for help, but... um, Well, hmm. possibly it's just that simple, right? You do your research, you figure out which ones apply to the group that you're trying to do, whether it's... uh, Probably it's more... Makes me wonder, like, so it might be more complex to go for a project grant because if if you've already got a relationship with a funder, maybe it's like, well, you just don't screw it up. Yeah, sometimes I would say timing is really important too. Like, I've had grants where... You put in an application and it gets rejected and you phone them up and then they say, well, you know, it was just the wrong timing. Like we had to fund these other projects because they were happening sooner than yours. Like apply mm-hmm. for the next mm-hmm. intake. Yeah. Um, so persistence actually can be really important. Like if you just apply again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes right. you can get it right. Mm-hmm. Like you shouldn't. Yeah. You shouldn't give up. Like, if you get rejected once, it yeah. <laughs> doesn't mean you're rejected forever. Don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like everybody probably gets rejected sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And do you have, are there any kind of common pitfalls that you've run into or sort of horror stories that you've had from your work? <laughs> horror in, stories. I know. It's very, very dramatic. <laughs> well, hmm. I think my horror stories are mostly related to when you have too many editors on your grant. Oh, Okay. Uh, too many cooks in the kitchen kind of thing like Mm -hmm. you don't want you don't want too many people editing the same document it's just that is typically a nightmare (laughs) I can I can see it yeah (laughs) if you're the one who's like managing that it's 
it's not fun. Right. Um, you know, you need proofreaders, but you know, limit it. <laughs> And then say, you know, that's done. Mm -hmm. Like a grant is never going to be perfect. You know, there's probably always going to be at least one grammar mistake or something, right?、Mm -hmm. And that's fine, right? Yeah. Once I submitted a grant like four minutes after the deadline. Oh yes. And you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, I finally got it in, but it was late, and it was fine, right? But you know, you just don't want to be in that position. I actually remember <laughs> in some of the board work that I've done, there was a, there was a gaming grant application and. Uh, we missed the deadline by quite a lot, right? <laughs> right. And then we were wondering, like,、uh, how's this going to work out? We actually need the money, yeah. Right. Yeah.、Uh, and then it took months to figure out whether we would or would not be getting it. It turned out we actually did、right. get it, right? In spite of being quite late. But、uh, you know, the board's sitting around going, "Okay, do we have this huge hole in the budget, or don't we?" Right. So yeah, you don't want to be in that position if you can avoid it. Well, very much so. <laughs> I mean, it makes me wonder.、Um, of course, because it's not a guaranteed thing, and sometimes it really is money that you need.、Uh, have you ever had to go through a situation where you know there was,、uh, well, we didn't get this big grant we were hoping for, and therefore we have this shortfall? And then what did the group do to compensate or or mm -hmm. get by? Mm -hmm. But you know, typically, if you don't get the grant, you go to other sources of funding, like you know. If you've got a good relationship with an individual donor, maybe、mm, you、mm -hmm. you speak with this donor and you say, "We didn't get this grant. Would you be able to help, you know, fund a portion of the project?" Right. You know, so there's always other options. On the topic of individual donors, I want to ask you about that. Sure. So,、um, I know some groups are more likely to be able to get individual donations than others. If you're、mm -hmm. high profile, if you're well established, you know, if you're one of the Premier names in your city.、Mm -hmm. I think there's probably a reasonable a number of people who will be available to provide donations. Would you agree? Yes. 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 But. But. It's interesting how people think of individual donors as wealthy. I do. I definitely think that. <laughs> Is that not accurate? Well, I would disagree. Okay. I, of course, there are wealthy donors who you know have deep pockets,、mm -hmm. and those people can provide super meaningful support to any nonprofit, right? It it could be a game changer, right? Maybe yeah, they, yeah. Maybe they die, and in their will, they leave an enormous gift. Here's fifty thousand dollars. Here's fifty thousand. Hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, millions, right? You you just never know、yeah. what somebody's、mm -hmm. able to give, but that's the thing. You know, there are also people who aren't as fortunate with their wealth, and they continue to give. Right. So I think you should never make any assumptions about a donor's capacity. You know? Right.、Mm -hmm. I find it really just boils down to how passionate are they about the organization? How、right. much do they、mm -hmm. love what you do? Um, so it's people who have some relationship to the group. Yeah, pr primarily, right?、Uh, those are your best donors, I would say, because、mm -hmm. they understand your organization, they understand what you're doing,、um, and it's and and hopefully they know people in the group or on the board or the staff, and they can、mm -hmm. connect very easily. So again, it's very much relationship based. If you've got, right, you know, you've got, you know. A lady who's been coming to a con your concerts for ten years,、uh, you know that that lady probably loves what you do,、mm -hmm. and if she hasn't made a donation, somebody should ask her. <laughs> yeah, right. Of course, I mean, having a program for doing exactly that would probably be very smart in a group, right? Like figure、yeah. out who your who your people are, who、yeah. is in your community, yeah, and then、uh, maybe making a. Giving them an opportunity to make a donation at some point would、Ex、probably be smart. Exactly, and it can just be small, right? Like start small with them. Don't if you don't have an established relationship with them, you can't, you know, ask them for ten thousand dollars right off the bat. But you know, get at least get them started because once they're started, you want to keep them there, and you can hopefully grow、yeah. what they're able、mm. to give down the road. Sure, that makes sense. And I guess there, there's even the equivalent, I guess, of a、uh, of a.、Uh, Project versus,、um, oh, sorry, the other one. Operating. Operating. <laughs> It's kind of like that because it could be somebody who just gives a little money every month. Yeah. Right. Or it could be somebody who says, "Okay, I know you're going to do this big thing, and I'd love to help you with that." Yes. Right. Exactly.、So、it could be either one of those. It could, and it's important to keep your donors informed about what's coming up. Right.、Mm -hmm. If they know ahead of time that there's this big project happening, or you know, a new album being recorded. Tell them about it, and tell them that they're looking that you're looking for support. 
Because that have could be a project grant, would be an album. It could be. Right? It's a little or... bit. It's, I find it's kind of challenging to get those grants for recording projects. It used to be a bigger thing. You used mm. to be able to get more funding for album recordings, and I think it's harder now okay. than it used to be. It's still possible, but it's a little bit trickier. To... I mean, in some sense, people don't buy albums anymore. So exactly. That's <laughs> maybe part of it. <laughs> yeah. um, what are some typical examples of projects that people get excited about and want to donate, if not recording projects? Okay. Well, if we're talking about grants, that's a different thing. Grantors want different things than what individual donors want. Yeah, how, I would how say. so? What would you say is the difference? You know, so government, uh, rightly so, is very focused right now on DEI initiatives, which is uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay, yes. So, um, you know, if you are hiring um, a group of black artists, queer artists, you know, those kinds of programming elements have a lot of pull with grant funders right okay, now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but on the flip side, it, and individual donors may also love that too, but sometimes you see individual donors, maybe they're more conservative, they don't want things to change, and they want to fund okay. the same mm -hmm. things that you've been doing. So sometimes it can, it can be a difficult conversation with a with a donor right. who maybe really wants you to keep doing Handel's Messiah, for instance, right? Right, a, right. A government agency is not going to want to fund the Handel's Messiah project, but maybe an individual donor does. So, right, yeah, it's interesting um, that balance. So it's knowing your community. Yeah, right? exactly. What do they want? Would you survey them to find out? Definitely. Definitely. It's super useful, both from marketing and a fundraising standpoint, mm -hmm. right? Um, you'll figure out what they're what they want to see or do or have you do, right? It's yeah, super yeah. important to do surveys. Not too much, right? You know, all Well, you don't right want to annoy emotion. people, but you do <laughs> yeah. want data, right? Exactly. So it's probably a combination of that and personal relationships mm -hmm. uh, to really come up with a program or a best approach or a strategy yeah. uh, to both of those kinds of funding, really. Exactly. In a way. Yeah. 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 Uh, and let's do one for the audience here. So uh, what are some little known grants in your area that you've been able to get and how did you get them? Write it in the comments below for everybody's enjoyment. <laughs> okay. And so where can people go, uh, both here in Canada and possibly elsewhere, to learn more about how to do this well? Uh, well, I'll speak for what I know. I'm sure there are lots of other resources out there. Mm -hmm. But I learned this year about the Grant Professionals Association. Okay. And they have some great resources on their website uh, for general like tips uh, and general practices. They also have something interesting called the Code of Ethics. Oh, interesting. Uh, which is very interesting. Uh, I attended their workshop, Ethical Dilemmas in Grant Writing. And there are quite a few, actually. Uh, Such as? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say um, a granting body gives you $50,000 to do a big project, but now you don't want to do the project. Oh, do you give the money back? Do you give the money back? Yeah, okay. I mean, probably. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. I guess ethics is, all, is often a concern when there's money involved, right? When mm -hmm. there's promises made and money collected. That's right. Uh, ethical uh, uh, potential problems yeah. arise. Yeah, and even around like compensation for, for grant writers, um, that, that's another big issue because yeah. people will say, oh, well, we'll pay you to write the grant if you're successful in getting the grant. Right, yeah. I don't think, you know, we all acknowledge that wasn't fair um, mm -hmm. because there is a profession of grant writers and there has to be some kind of established yeah, um, yeah. compensation for the work that's being done. Um, so, you know, there's... As opposed to a purely mercenary kind of approach where, well, if you get me some money, I'll give you some of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's... yeah. And then how do you put that in the budget for the grant yeah. that you got? It's just, it's very complicated, right? And, and I guess from the position of the people on the board who are needing the money to make some group work, it's attractive in a way because you're like, well, if you're not successful, then it's no cost to us. But what it means is that you have to make a commitment. Yes. You know, as a group and say, yes, right. we are going to go after some grants yeah. and we're going to we're going to actually pay this person regardless. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Just budget it in your general programming budget. Yeah. You know, we're going to have this money set aside for a grant writer. Yeah, sure. For the year kind of thing. It is. It is a potential ethical concern, isn't it? It reminds me of uh, charities and how they get ranked by how much of your donation goes to the actual work being done yeah. and how much to the administration. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's all very sticky topics. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. So in spite of the exhaustion that everybody undoubtedly feels around the pandemic and COVID, I, I think it's had a major impact on grant writing and may change things in the future. Would you agree? Totally. Yeah. It, the pandemic was very a very interesting time for, for grants being awarded. Mm. Um, it somehow got easier. Currently, you know, governments were ready to support the nonprofit world, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so reporting and applications got very short and condensed, which is so great because, you know, in the past, you'd have to write, you know, pages and pages of applications and or of applications of, of uh, writing material. Right? right. And things really got condensed during the pandemic. And I hope that will stay because it is a very time consuming uh, business to be writing, let's say, a four year, multi year grant grant application, which happens with some operating grants. Um, they can take weeks to write, right? Right, right. Um, so that was an interesting thing that happened during the pandemic. And just the fact that money was easier to get out the door to us was another interesting phenomenon. And I think that will change going into the future. Uh, but the future is a little bit uncertain. I'm not sure how all the granting agencies are going to use what they learned during the pandemic and bring that into, you know, a new normal, mm -hmm. so to speak, as much as I don't like to use that word. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Exhaustion. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I know um, some groups, got, there's an interesting situation because, of course, the grants kept coming for some groups, even though they were really not operating. Yes. And so their expenses went way, way down. Yes. Right? Uh, and so they wind up with a, a bit of a bit of a chunk of money in the bank, and yeah. now the granting organization would be looking and saying, "Well, why do you need a grant? You've got all this money." That's right. You know, so it's probably it's interesting in so many ways, right? The to disrupt things with a pandemic um, makes you ask questions about how how things work. Totally. Yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here today. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. You as well. Yeah. Thanks. And if you've enjoyed this content, please uh, hit the like button to bless the YouTube algorithm. We do one video every week. And so if you want to be notified, subscribe and click on the bell icon.